Did you know that even though all the hype is around flagships, 80% of the world uses mid-range or budget phones? There are two reasons for this. The first is that flagships are hella expensive, and the second is that in today's market, you can get a phone that has an advanced Snapdragon chipset coupled with a decent camera for only around $400. Today we have for you a full review of three of the most hyped affordable phones of this year, the Google Pixel 7a, Samsung Galaxy A54, and the Xiaomi 13 Lights. Buckle up your seatbelts and let the facts speak. My first impressions are based on how they feel in my hands. They all get a passing mark when compared to the price, but I would have to say that I prefer the Pixel 7a due to the aluminum frame, compared to the plastic frame on the other two. At the same time, considering the fact that you'll most likely buy a case to protect your phone, it won't really make a difference how the phone feels without a cover in the long run. The Pixel 7a also has a plastic back and a glass front which is protected by Gorilla Glass 3. Meanwhile, the A54 has slightly better protection with a glass front and back, both protected by Gorilla Glass 5. The Xiaomi 13 Lite joins the A54 with the same protection for the front, with the back being unconfirmed. So they all have adequate screen protection, but is it worth it? Google has opted to go with a 6.1 inch OLED screen that supports HDR and a 90Hz refresh rate at a bright level of 950 nits. The Galaxy A54 has a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED screen supporting HDR10 Plus with a 120Hz refresh rate that hits a 1000 nits at high brightness mode. The Xiaomi 13 Lite on the other hand has a 6.55 AMOLED display with 68 billion colors, HDR10 Plus, 120Hz refresh rate and 1000 nits peak brightness. Your eyes are most likely not going to be picking up the 68 billion colors when you're just streaming some online content, but it's there so I'm just letting you know. When we looked at them side by side, we saw that Samsung's device does look a little bit brighter with punchier colors, but not to the degree that it would affect my decision of buying one over the other. One thing that is quite important for some people though is that Xiaomi's device has a curved screen with small bezels on the border, while the other two are flat screens with pretty large bezels. Even though I like the shape and feel of the Pixel 7a, I can see these big borders being a nuisance for some as they don't exactly look great if you stare at them for too long. Last part of the display is a selfie camera at the top, or in the case of the Xiaomi 13 Lite, two selfie cameras. Now I'm not sure just how much you need this, but it is kind of cool that you can take a selfie in ultra wide. In fact, if this feature existed when Bradley Cooper took the world's most famous selfie in the Oscars, maybe they would have been able to get everyone in the frame. All the screens are 1080p with similar PPI density around 400 to 430, with the Pixel having the most, so in the end, we would say that they're all more than good enough for playing some basic games, streaming content, and surfing through social media like you're doing now. And while you're at it, drop a like and a sub if you want to help us out. The next step will be our specialty, the cameras. 64 megapixels on the Pixel and 50 megapixels on the other two in terms of the main camera. This category will highlight a typical issue with Xiaomi devices, which is their lesser capable camera software. Coupled with the lesser hardware on the 13 Lite that obviously can't be compared to their latest flagship, the 13 Ultra, you'll easily see the lacking performance in comparison with the Pixel 7a and Galaxy A54, especially in terms of detail on my body. While it's still going to be good enough for most people, if you're someone like me who absolutely loves walking around and taking photos with the camera of your phone, Google and Samsung will probably have you covered better in the mid-range category. Low light photography showcases the differences between them even more as we now move on to ultra wide. This is where Google steps on the gas and performs much better than the other two. There isn't much to be surprised about as it was the same with the Pixel 6a because Google is very good at passing down the performance of their flagship phone camera down to their mid-range variant. This claim can be backed up with the fact that both the Pixel 5a and 6a ended up winning MKBHD's blind camera test competitions that they were featured in. This incredible performance won't continue with portrait mode though as Google is just really lagging behind in this area. If you enjoy using this mode, I can easily say that Samsung is one of the kings, if not the king of portrait photography. It is still not going to be the same level as the S23 series, but is decent enough to overtake the competition when it comes to detail and edge detection. A tip from me to you would be to decrease the bokeh slightly when you're taking the photo as the software often jams it up all the way which kind of leads to unappealing photos. As for taking videos with these mid-range devices, the Galaxy has the most detail while the Pixel looks slightly punchier. The 13 Lite is once again not on the same level as the other two with lesser detail all around. 
Interestingly enough, the same phone performs much better indoors than it does outdoors, just like with the photos. The Pixel looks to be the worst of the bunch here, as I also own a Pixel 7 Pro and I'm not happy with the performance of its videos. Not much difference in low light conditions, as the Pixel is once again doing slightly worse with a lack of sharpness and focus. Overall, I'd go with the A54, with the 13 light coming in a close second in the video category, as we also have one ultra wide video in which I honestly have no preference. If you really need to, you can go ahead and use it, but on a mid-range phone, I'd stick to the wide camera as much as I could. Unsurprisingly, none of these phones have an optical zoom lens, so the maximum that I would advise you to zoom is 3 times, and maybe 5 times if you really have to. They all look fine and good enough to use if you need to see something far away. As for stabilization, the Galaxy has the most stable footage while walking and shooting in 4K. I'd pick the Pixel to come in second place here, but this is going to be reversed soon enough when we start running. It doesn't work this way when the flagships are compared, but here, the Pixel's active mode is seen to be working better than the super stable of the Galaxy which kind of surprised me. Taking some selfies didn't though, because they're all pretty similar in terms of quality, with Google and Samsung being maybe a step ahead by being more natural, as opposed to Xiaomi smoothening out my skin to make me look pretty. Slow motion has more variance on the Samsung and Xiaomi devices, as they can both shoot at 960 frames, with Google being capped out at 240 just like their flagship, and macro is the same as Google only put a macro mode on the Pixel 7 Pro. The other two are showing a similar performance, with a dedicated macro lenses of the two phones. With that out of the way, we have arrived at performance. Google's very own Tensor G2 is present in the Pixel, with Samsung not giving up on Exynos by putting a 1380 in the A54. The Xiaomi 13 Lite has a Qualcomm SM7450 Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, which is arguably the strongest chip here, right? Wrong. The Pixel outperformed both of them in terms of single core and multi core on Geekbench. This is pretty much what I like about Google the most, even though that this is their mid range model, they don't see the need to downgrade. And Tutu was a close race between the 7A and the 13 Lite, but the Pixel came out on top once again here, as well as performing pretty well on 3D Benchmark. The battery levels after the test were also quite similar, with the Galaxy having the most left, courtesy of their 5000 mAh package. The 13 Lite has a 4500 mAh one, which is fast chargeable to 100% in 40 minutes, with the Pixel packing a 4385 mAh battery, but a benefit Google has placed here is that it also has wireless charging. The last thing I can think of before rounding out the results is that the A54 has a micro SD slot which supports up to 1TB, while the other two are limited to internal storage. Well guys, what a great comparison between three great and affordable phones. They are very similar in some regards, but also very different in others. I'm 100% sure you have a favorite, so please remember to give us your feedback and opinions about these phones in the comments, as well as dropping a like and hitting that sub button for more tech content. I'll see you in the next video.